Sudan. Sudan is the crossroads of Africa. This is a country where the Arab traders went one day, the Afri went one way, the Africans went on. So in Sudan, you, you have virtually two or three groups. The other thing about the Sudan, which also is not known, is that, uh, you know, it's, it's still up to today, one of, 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 of those of the, of the Muslim faith, you know, when they go to Mecca for pilgrimage, they go through, the, you know, Nigeria will tell you there are millions of, there are people who go on pilgrimage and end up staying in the Sudan. So the Sudan was really a crossroads. And then it, when the colonial people put borders, you know, some of these borders, they just put around spots where they shouldn't have. And divided. But Sudan, you have, so what you are hearing about this fight is, the Arab Sudanese are fighting the, the, the African Sudanese. The African Sudanese are the farmers. You know, Africans want to become farmers and stay. So this fight is, 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 is between these two peoples, you know, who are, and it's been going on forever and ever. And what's happening with global warming? One of the things we don't talk about, and, you know, please think about global warming. I mean, I may be gone, but those of you who are going to remain, Good luck, you're going to have long winters and, 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 and long summer. With global warming and, you know, it's, it's, the drought has been tremendous. So as these farmers move uh, and, and, and the, 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 the Arab uh, uh, Sudanese are pastoral people, and as they also look for more land for their there are these clashes. And so you have this very sad uh, conflict that's going on in Darfur and and all these people. And one of the biggest problems they have now, the, the African Union has provided soldiers and whatever, but they are almost uh, powerless because this is not a war where, you know, people are stuck in one place and, you know, the, you know, they come from. It's a moving war. So, you know, they go out and wipe out the village that side. The soldiers go in one direction and then it's, they've wiped out the village on the, on the other side. So this is why you read in the papers about uh, one of the things that they've been talked about is that uh, NATO, because they have all these fancy uh, helicopters and planes that could be there, but even NATO, they're not going to fly at night looking for these people. You know, it's, it's, it's a very tragic kind of situation. So what we've been trying to do is there's been an attempt to try and and get these people to, 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 to work, to live together. And you know, because in, in one part of, of Sudan, and Sudan is larger than Europe, it's one country. I mean, it's a huge country, and you know, it's twice the size of the United States. I mean, I know if you live in the United States, you don't think there's anything bigger than the United States, but there is. And you know, so it's a huge, 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 huge country. It's very difficult to deal with it. So. You know, but the good news is that in the one part of Sudan, in the south, things have gone bad. Now, the other curse we have in, in Africa is the curse of oil. Lord have mercy, once a country discovers oil, I mean, it, it's a real curse because the money never goes to the people that are there, but there are all these companies that come in and, you know, they will do everything for you and what have you. Of course, you never get the, get the, the, the money goes to the few. Now, Sudan is, the problem is that in, 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 on one of their coasts, the one part of, of, of which is the Arab Sudan has oil, but there's more oil on the other part, which is the south where the Africans. So, you know, we're trying to get the Sudanese to live together as one country, but it, it becomes very complicated. But if you're doing your geography and, you know, you, they would say that Sudan was one of those. It's, it has been for centuries and centuries and still is up to today. A country that was at the crossroads, really. People going north and west and east, they come through the same country. And you know, to handle it is to pass very stringent laws, but to, to also make sure that you have uh, 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 instruments and systems to control money. One of the problems of South Africa is that we're a very wealthy country. We don't publicize it too much, but uh, we're a very wealthy country. So there's more money 
than we need, let's say, for education. So the government, you know, appropriates a lot of money, and this money eventually comes back. But money is tempting, and, you know, so you have people who, because it cannot be absorbed, you have people who, who then, it, it, it creates corruption and what have you. And, you know, so, but it's easier as a country because eventually you create enough systems to try and, and deal with it, but you cannot deal with it 100%. In the UN, it's more difficult because, remember, the UN is all over the world. I mean, you know, it's a, a one of the biggest, biggest UN missions now are in, in the Congo. And, you know, but we have UN missions in Burundi, in Asia, you know, elsewhere in the world. So the, 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 the corruption, when it has happened, and it's happened around things like procurement, particularly. But, you know, they look at the corruption in the United States. Remember, there used to be the stories about, you know, a toilet seat that cost $100,000 or a hammer that cost $60. That's, that's all corruption. But in the U.S., you can steal as much as you can. There's still some left. But, you know, in, in, in the U.N., when you steal, or in this country, you're stealing against poor people. And, you know, once you're still there, it's, it's gone. And we've been, we are very much involved now. Secretary General Kofi Annan has been very big now on trying to help with procurement to try and have system. But in the UN, money goes easily because, like I said, it's not an organization that is up to the highest uh, modern standards because we, 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 we rely on contributions from people. So, you know, you don't update things very easily. So it, it is a very, very big deal. And you let's discuss all the time, yeah. I think we can take one or two more okay. questions. Okay, okay, yeah. I don't want to exhaust the amount yeah, of yeah, yeah, yeah. No questions? Well, I'll start asking you questions. <laughs> <laughs> and then I want to thank you so thank much. You very for much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.